This is an introduction to the Flare software. We have a copy of Flare software set up here. We're running today a Bolt standalone machine. This has its own characteristics, and this Flare system that we have here has been calibrated to that machine. There are aspects of the machine here that are unique to this machine, and we have buttons and controls here that make it suitable for this machine and unsuitable to other machines. We have here the main flare screen. The main flare screen shows the axes of motion of the machine as buttons. It shows the positions of those axes scaled in the units that those axes move within. We have a control menu that allows us to control the machine. We have an editing menu that allows us to edit things on the screen. First of all, I'm going to engage my robot. This button is showing that my robot is engaged. This shows up in red because on this machine, I really need to know that it is engaged. There are red lights on the machine so that other people don't go too near. These axes of motion have now become black on screen, showing that they are enabled. The numbers have become black, showing that those axes are enabled and are capable of being moved. I have another axis here, which is a focus axis. I'm separately going to enable that. Again, there's a number in black showing that the focus axis is enabled. I'm using a three button mouse. My left mouse button selects things. My right mouse button stores things. And my middle mouse button turns things on and off. I can also put a mouse onto these numbers and move axes of motion. If I left mouse on those numbers, I end up with motion on one of the axes to rotate of this machine. If I right mouse on that button, it goes the other way. If I left mouse on the lift, it lifts up. If I right mouse, it lifts down. If I left mouse on the arm, it lifts up. If I right mouse, it lifts down. All of these axes of motion are capable of being moved, and so I can move my machine to set positions, and line up my camera to look at particular things. Let us say that that is my first position, and I wish to store that as a waypoint. Flare works using waypoints and curves, so this will be my first waypoint. So I'm going to go over to my position 1. I'm going to left click to select it. And I'm going to right click, which has stored that position complete. If I wish to, I can move individual axes and left click and right click store individually. I now have a complete row of positions that constitutes a waypoint. If I now move my machine to a new position, using my left and right mouse, right mouse buttons, and I go to my position, number one, 
and I use my editing menu to add a line, I end up with a second line. If I now left click, right click on that line, I have stored a second position. So I have a first waypoint and a second waypoint. Flare has been set up in this instance to be running at a playback speed of 25 frames a second. I can change that if I wish. Automatically here, our two positions have been given a four second interval, 100 frames at 25 frames a second. I can, if I wish, put any number there. So here I have 237 frames at 25 frames a second. I now have a move. Because I'm using a standalone bolt, I have to decide whether I want to run this at the speed defined by these numbers or much slower. Here I'm now going to go robot fast which will enable me to run it at that speed, forward run. That box told me that the bolt wants a roll condition set rather than having the roll do whatever it likes. That's exclusive to this particular machine. So here we go again. Fast, forward run. It said ready to go to. In other words, it wants to go to the start of my move because at the moment it's somewhere else other than the start. I do the go to, it moves to the position. This is my start position. It's now ready to shoot at the speed defined by these two numbers. If I press shoot, the rig does the shoot. I'm now at the end position. So if I wish to, I can go robot fast, back run, shoot, and run the whole move backwards. Again, it's running at the speed defined by that number and that number. If I want to run it faster, I can put a smaller number in there. I put a smaller number in there, robot fast, forward run, shoot. It does it quicker. If I put a smaller number in there, robot fast, back run, it does it quicker. If I wish, I can not only change that number in order to define how fast the move is in frames, I can also change the frame rate. This is effectively the frames per second that the move would be played back at after recording. If I wish, I can make that a different number. So now I have a move that's 50 frames long and at a frame rate at 50 frames per second. This should run the move in one second. Robot fast, forward run, shoot, which it did. I can also run it backwards in one second. Shoot. Because we are using a bolt standalone, we are actually capable of running moves very quickly indeed. If I were to make that 
200 frames per second and only 50 frames long, I would be asking the machine to do the move in a quarter of a second. Now, is the machine capable of doing it in quarter of a second? In order to find out, we have to calculate it. Robot fast, forward run. This box tells me that I cannot run the move at that speed. Each of these axes of motion here require too much acceleration in two places in order to run this move at 50 frames in 200 frames per second. This box tells me that the fastest move I can run this in at 200 frames a second is 89 frames. Or I could reduce my camera speed to 113 frames per second. This factor here shows the proportion of error for each of these axes of motion. I'm going to exit from here and I'm going to put a different number. Suppose instead of 89 I put 70. Robot fast, forward run. Now less axes are showing an error and the factors have changed. Again, the same move at 200 frames per second needs 89 frames to run it. I can either choose to rescale my move to 89 frames here. I can choose to run it and ignore the warning where I can choose to override the machine warnings and potentially trip out or damage an axis. I can choose to do stop motion to go through the moves. I can choose to run the move at this frames per second. Or I can exit and choose something else. I'm going to rescale. Now I have 89 frames at 200 frames per second. Because I have taken time to do those calculations, the machine has defaulted to a slow condition. I don't want to shoot it slow. I'm going to press stop. I'm going to go robot fast. I'm going to click forward run and shoot it at the fastest it thinks it can run. <laughs> As I say, this machine is chosen to move quickly. I'm now going to take the machine to a home position. This is a position where all the axes are at a standard position that doesn't change from day to day. This would enable me to take this move and store it and come back another day and run the same move. I'm going to choose to go to home. I'm now ready to go to. Press go to. And the machine has gone to its home position. This move may be valuable to me. It may, I may have filmed it and need to film it again. Therefore, I'm going to Go to File, and I'm going to save my job as Test. And I'll have a name for this job, Test Job. I'm now going to disengage my robot so that these axes go off. And I'm going to disengage my focus axis. This has been a Mark Roberts motion control training video.
Thank you for watching.